everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe toy review. And today I'll be taking a look at the Cobra Infantry, the 1986 Viper. Now, the Viper makes his first cartoon appearance in the 1986 five part miniseries Arise Serpent or Arise in part two. However, he makes a very late appearance in the comic books. As a matter of fact, it was very hard to find uh, which comic books he actually made his first appearance in. I tracked it down to maybe G.I. Joe Special Missions number 7. However, he certainly makes his first appearance in the uh, main title of G.I. Joe in issue 69, which is very strange because that's a 1988 comic book. That's very, very late. One interesting thing to note is the, uh, the co uh, cartoons, and sometimes the comics as well, actually show the um, the Viper with a distinctive red skull patch on his uh, shirt sleeve, which is something that the toy didn't have. I believe its origin comes from the the original um, uh, the original prototype pictures for the um, for the toy, but it was never incorporated into the toy itself. Uh, another interesting thing is. You'll note that, just like the bats from 1986 as well, we have a file card uh, variant here for the first year, the Vipers were called Vipers, plural. And the second year that the toy was issued, they changed it to singular. The 1986 Viper was really meant to replace the Cobra Trooper as the basic Cobra soldier. Now, the Cobra was, of course, uh, issued from 1982 to 1985, so he is highly recognizable, and pretty much he, he still pops up from time to time in all forms of media. So a lot of collectors simply, um, simply make the Viper an Assault Trooper variant of the Cobra Trooper. And as such, he has a lot of really nice aggressive things on him, like the, the vest and the bombs and all of whatnot. But he still retains the, um, uh, the Cobra aesthetic. He doesn't go quite into, uh, quite into G.I. Joe territory with all his military gear. One very interesting thing to note is that his belt buckle is sort of uh, molded off-center. It, it kind of bugged me for a while until I got used to it. Viper comes with an RDT-7 assault rifle with grenade launcher. A very interesting uh, military rifle. I don't believe it's based on any any real-life military rifle though. It has a, a lot of aspects of uh, many different real-world real uh, firearms. One interesting thing is that uh, there is a dark gray version of this rifle from an uh, accessory pack, uh, Battle Gear accessory pack number 6, I believe. Um, some collectors like that because it, well, obviously a darker gray rifle would look quite a bit better than this bright light gray one. But this is what's original to the figure. He also comes with a field pack. Very distinctive, uh, even though it's black, and sometimes it can be hard to see in photographs, but uh, you can see it has a tiny little uh, Cobra button there, and a rather large canteen with these ribs. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the easiest way you could uh, determine whether this is the Viper backpack or not. Have you ever wondered why the Viper comes with both a face shield and goggles at the same time? You, you would think that one or the other would really serve the same purpose. I kind of wondered that myself, and I began to think that maybe the face shield was more of a privacy shield for the camo gear that the file card suggests. It could also serve as maybe a gas mask, as that probably wouldn't be terribly comfortable to be wearing all the time. So, if you don't need to wear the gas mask, you wear the goggles instead. Any thoughts on your end? What do you think? 
another interesting thing is that while the aftermarket for a single Viper has kind of gone through the roof as far as I'm concerned for such a uh, common and fairly highly um, produced figure, if you're really interested in that old style O-ring 12 points of articulation style, you should really try to track down a 2006 Cobra Viper Pit set, which was basically a six pack of slightly remolded figures. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.